Welcome everyone to On Podcast, the On Microsoft Podcast, where we talk about Microsoft stuff on a podcast. I'm your host today, Kareem Anderson. I'm joined back in studio, so to speak, home studio, <laughs> with the world's greatest co-host, Earth Backus. Yeah, the dynamic duo is back together, uh, and we'll be going through this week's topics. Uh, I'll let uh, Air start off, just kind of get some dust off of him, you know, brush back up. So first of all, uh, our favorite uh, Microsoft executive panels, Panay, is teasing some brand new features for Windows 11, which was not mentioned during the Microsoft event. There are two new specific apps that he teased uh, via Twitter. So if you don't follow panels, uh, we'll let you know what you might have just missed out on. Yeah, and then uh, going along with more Windows 11 stuff, uh, we have the OneNote team uh, is reaching out to everybody, letting them know that they finally decided to merge or consolidate the OneNote apps between uh, OneNote for Windows 10 and OneNote, uh, the Office 365 version. We'll get into more details about that. And then we also have a new Windows 11 build to report on. Um, it brings some improvements for the Microsoft Store, as well as a new family safety widget. So we'll just run you through the changes really quickly in this new build. Yeah, and then we have uh, our favorite section, which is the Fast Recap, where we just blow through a ton of topics that weren't huge headlines, but still need to be covered because we like to keep an eye on everything that's developing in Microsoft World. And that starts off with Windows 365 Cloud PC becoming general, uh, hitting general availability. Uh, then we have SwiftKey Beta gets a uh, Cloud Cookboard syncing. Uh, what else do we got? We also have some news about COVID-19 and the Delta Wave and Microsoft mandating uh, the vaccine for everyone and everyone who works in the offices and all contractors who come into the offices as well. Yeah, and then we also have Edge 93 heading to uh, the beta build uh, for, or at least for beta testers and beta channel. Then we have our week ahead. Yep, and as always in week ahead, it seems like every week we have some kind of new hardware. And this week I have a webcam from the company called SJ Cam for a review. Um, this is kind of like a GoPro, but it's also a webcam and you could hook it up and carry it around and it has a six axis stabilizer and it's 4K resolution and it's pretty neat. But that's not the only thing. Um, our, our Xbox editor and Xbox writer also got some new hardware of his own. Yeah, so we will be, uh, I mean, it's Apple related, so you know, yeah. I'm not too happy <laughs> about it, but hey, uh, he seems yeah. pretty excited and it's always yeah. good to like know uh, what people are using, uh, especially you know, every day. Uh, we're not paying favoritism over here. Uh, we'll probably also, you know, ideally, I wrote a piece about Panos uh, teasing more stuff. There was uh, what he's pulling from is this grid of apps. It seems like he's, he's two for I think there's like eighteen in there. So yep. he could be teasing apps for the remainder uh, of uh, <laughs> this two months cycle. So we'll get into that as well. But why don't you get into the first teaser of his of app, which um, congratulations, you made it to tech Mimi with your story, which I don't think has ever happened at, on Microsoft. So congrats for that and get us started with the big uh, tease from panels. Yeah, it was a huge tease for such a small topic for such a small thing. So uh, we had, I believe it was about three days ago or was it last week? It might have been last week. Panos teased uh, the snipping tool being updated, uh, you know, with was sort of a mini controversy because uh, from what he showed in the GIF that he had uh, teasing it, didn't look like much changed. Uh, there was some rounded corners, new UI, but he seemed very excited about it. And he was just saying that's first look, first look. So I'm assuming there might be more to come. There might be more functionality coming to it. Uh, it was a 17 second long teaser video showing you basically what Sniffing Tool does. Uh, but uh, following that, I believe yesterday, he also teased some new uh, clock uh, and Spotify. Alarm app. Yep, yep. Alarm it's basically clock. it's basically just a redesigned alarm app, but not redesigned. They've also added some integrations with Spotify, which I believe is new. Yeah, uh, what they're doing is they're having called focus se sessions, basically, and what that does is it's combining your uh, focus assist, which you have uh, kind of set up. Uh, in your action center or your settings menu if you want to get really granular. Uh, and you can kind of set up the hours in which you would like to not be bothered with uh, notifications. Well, what they're doing now is they're allowing you to, at least with this new focus, focus sessions, is basically set up a block of time. You can de de designate when, and it, I'm assuming it runs on the kind of a countdown clock. So if you say, I want to be focused for two, half, two, two solid hours, you can. 
And the Spotify integration comes into play where you could basically pick playlists from Spotify and have that played over, I'm assuming across your desktop as you're focused. So instead of having to go into basically just consolidating some times and clicks and steps for you. So instead of setting up a timer in your clock, then going opening up the Spotify app, then picking the playlist and just running the two side by side, you're allowed to let Windows automatically pick out your, you know, read your playlist. You set up the time you want and for two, three hours, maybe half an hour if you're you know, super focused and you can get stuff done. And music, you know, music in that playlist will play across your desktop. Uh, at least that's yeah. what we're seeing from. from the, and it has an integration with Microsoft to do there as well. It's all in this nice little nifty hub rather than, like you said, rather than having to go to different apps, you have everything you need in one session and in one place if you want to just have some time for yourself and to focus and to get away from work and make sure you're very productive. I believe he said he is pumped for this as well. So that's how you know it's something good. He's always pumped. Uh, I'm interested <laughs> in seeing that, uh, it, like you said, it, it does integrate to-do list as well. So I'm going to, I'm wondering if this will be spanned across other productivity platforms so that it's kind of unison. So maybe right. in Outlook, if you're on the browser, you'll be able to pull up the session thing as well. Uh, or if you're in a uh, to-do list in the app itself, you'll be able to, again, pull up this Spotify integration. I, I just, I mean, we didn't get very much from him. It was a tease, obviously. Yeah. The video that he teased, I think it was like six or seven seconds of a GIF or whatnot. Uh, and there wasn't much, many more details about that. But we're expecting to see some more information come about later on. Is this the start of something new where like he teases like brand, brand new apps every week until November when we get Windows 11? Uh, I mean, you and I were talking about Mike. I'm like, what else does he got to do? I mean, I know he, <laughs> he's a cheap product uh, uh, person for Windows. And I mean, he's probably working super hard on hardware and software integration. But I mean, he has a team. I, I think he as an executive has some time to kind of tease out these things. I mean, it'd be, it's cool to get people's attention and focus on it. Uh, Cause I think what Microsoft has done, you know, arguably poorly is communication. So there are tons of things that I've seen anecdotally where people say, Oh, windows doesn't do this. or windows can't do that. Or windows doesn't, you know, I'm not allowed to do these kind of things. If they're making an argument for searching for Mac or Linux or Chrome and you tell them like, no, windows does it. It just does it in a pudgy kind of way yeah. or, the settings are hidden or you need to, so if Thanos can come out and do these kind of things, like if people know that like this is a feature, as small as it might be for us, it's still great communication to let people know there's a video they can go see. There are official, you know, walkthroughs of these products. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, if it's not new, it's something that Microsoft really needs to dig into and continue doing. So we talked about two apps there. We talked about the alarms app and also the snip and sketch thing, which is just basically merging the screen snip tool with the traditional uh, snipping tool, which is the Win32 app. So there's nothing new there aside for some rounded corners and new buttons and whatnot. But what is new, another Windows app that people often like to complain about is OneNote. And Microsoft is finally trying to clean things Clean, thing, clean the Skype situation up a bit where you only have one OneNote app and now three different apps. Um, they announced that they are unifying their two se separate OneNote apps into a single client in the year 2022. Uh, the OneNote UWP app that ships for Windows 10 will no longer come pre-installed on Windows 11 and Microsoft will be working on integrating some of those features into the traditional Win32 app that comes when you download Office. So it seems to me like they're moving away from UWPs and trying to push Win32 a bit more, even though you'll still be able to access both apps any way you want. Uh, for the time being, this follows kind of our first story where uh, Microsoft is in consolidation mode. Uh, yeah. I think Windows Central might have mentioned, I think uh, to give him credit, Daniel Rubino mentioned that at least this seems to be a trend of uh, slimming things down. Now we've seen Microsoft sort of do this where you know, we saw Skype was supposed to be one app and somehow it exploded in like three other ones. Three apps, yeah. uh, Link was supposed to be done away with, but now there's like Link Business, still Skype, slash, I mean, they get in these like, you know, fever pitches of like, oh, we're going to consolidate, we're going to consolidate, then somehow we get more. So uh, I'm not holding my breath, but it seems like the trend for Windows 11 is to consolidate, uh, as we mentioned with uh, the snipping tool uh, kind of getting refined. Uh, maybe it'll do away with the, uh, uh, 
the UWPS one, so to speak, the snippet sketch one. Yeah. Uh, although it looks like the snippet sketch is kind of baked into the way this new snippet tool works, at least right. uh, where you do all your editing for the for whatever you basically start being productive with Spotify in the background with one app. Uh, the same thing is happening for OneNote. Uh, there is, I forget a gentleman, he just started uh, super excited. We, I followed him on Twitter this morning and he's taking in questions. So uh, maybe we'll link to him in the, in the show notes or something like that. Uh, if you have any kind of things that you want to add to OneNote, but uh, more details. Uh, the OneNote, I believe that they're saying will be around through 2022, yep. but uh, they're preparing people to use the uh, Office 365 version of it. If you, so if you're Going to create one for your your team, your product, your your office, or whatever. Start doing it in the one thirty two version because what they're going to do is take features of the of the uh, OneNote for Windows ten and put them over to that one, not the other way around. So, uh, I mean, there's they're saying that everything should sync, but to be on the safe side, start using the one the one thirty two one, uh, and they'll bring over you know like the side menu bars, the fluidity, the animation, stuff like that from Windows ten from the Windows ten app. And they did share a mock-up which shows how the future Windows 11 OneNote app will look. And it, it's pretty much the same as the UWP app, to be honest. I mean, there's some more rounded corners and it looks uh, more in line with Microsoft's Windows 11 fluid design and whatnot, but it's pretty much the same. So if you've been using the either one of the two apps, it shouldn't be too much of a difference for you heading into the future. No, they also, I mean, these these are all design things. I know yeah. that the one that you're showing still uses the, uh, looks like manila folder tabs, yeah. you know, things. They also mentioned that they're going to bring over the side one, which is the one I prefer, which is why yeah. I use the Windows 10 one. They're going to, and they're going to make them optional. So uh, you'll be able to choose which layout you like, sort of like uh, how you can choose settings or view uh, forms in uh, File Explorer. Uh, the other thing that they're also talking about is obviously uh, new annotation kind of, features they're going to bring and new pin support stuff that they're going to bring. So aside from the UI elements of this, uh, be prepared for uh, better annotation, better uh, pin uh, integration as well. And uh, speaking of uh, pens and integrations, uh, Windows 11 uh, got a new build and it recently came out. I think it was, was it Thursday or Wednesday? Usually it's Thursday, uh, I think. I, I think, think it, it was, was Thursday. Thursday, yeah. I think you're right. Builds usually happen on Thursday, and this latest one comes in at version 2200.120. I mean, it's it's basically little small builds between f from what we got to now, and it has a couple of fixes for the store, and it also introduces a new family safety um, widget in the Windows 10 widgets uh, thing. So what are your thoughts on this new build? Do you think uh, they're getting slacking on their game? Uh, there's one thing I, I, I've been keeping monitoring is I think uh, Zach over Windows Central keeps highlighting that the volume thing, the volume rocker in Windows 10 hasn't changed through all these builds. He's getting a little worried because, you know, yeah. they're, they're doing this consolidated effort to make everything look nice, yet whenever you change the volume, you get that chunky Windows 8 volume uh, scroller and it, it that hasn't changed so right. while they're focusing on stuff like content and spotlight uh in the app store will now you know automatically scroll which is great the cool nice you know just a piece of polish on on the overall operating system there's still you know there's still things we're seeing uh, as far as context menus that are still you know bright white when you're using dark mode uh volume markers not adjusting to the overall roundedness of things so um while i appreciate small bills and i'm glad that they're coming out you know, schedule weekly like they are. Uh, I still want to see some other, you know, uh, polish. I don't necessarily need to see new features. I don't. <laughs> I never needed a family widget because uh, I don't really <laughs> share computers or anything like that. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I and with everyone getting a smartphone and their own iPads or tablets or or they're you know pitching the Surface Go two or or Surface laptop. I don't you know this family sharing idea of like oh we're gonna have just the one central computer in the house and we can kind of let people you know, use different uh, user access, stuff like that. That should be like priority number like three behind like fix the UI still and stuff like that. So um, I appreciate the builds. I, I'm always excited to download an insider build, but uh, there's, we need to focus on the UI, the, the blaring UI uh, things that are still outstanding. And there's some small changes. Um, I think they finally fixed a bug in the um, previews where the close icon was not rounded and it was square. Um, I'll have the 
full change log on the screen and you could give it a read to see because these change logs are like massive. They're like pages long now, even though these are small. We, we keep saying they're small builds, but they are bug bashing builds based off of the stuff that people report uh, and uh, the issues that they're having. Microsoft is actually fixing these issues and is always listening to feedback. Yeah, and uh, uh, for any Windows people that are listening to the podcast, again, I want to give you guys uh, the full glory that you guys deserve because you guys are working hard. Uh, and I appreciate that. I understand, you know, schedules and budgets and roadmaps yep. and milestones and all that stuff. So it isn't that we're unappreciative of the work. Uh, I also want to mention that, uh, that it probably shouldn't go without saying that they updated the uh, the new buttons in the File Explorer command bar uh, so that you get a drop down menu style with uh, all the options in one list instead of a nested list. So again, these are just uh, things that are going towards uh, the delineation between mouse support and touch support and somehow, you know, trying to walk that fine line of being able to accommodate both without, you know, a drastic, uh, you know, uh, whole section off se uh, area like we did with Windows 8, where this is your touch stuff. And then when you, you know, pull the curtain back a little bit, you get all this weird, when you know, desktop stuff. They're making things bigger. They're putting things in listed order so that you can, you know, move efficiently and quickly with your mouse and also your fingers. So again, uh, when we say a little build, like uh, our said, uh, we, you know, it's only little in relative to, you know, what we want to see with far, yep. as far as major features and stuff are concerned. This is still very uh, good. It's a very stable build. I've been using it for the last, uh, I don't know, 20, 20 hours or so. Uh, no crashes, nothing, you know, no flickers of the screen. So uh, those of you who are testing, uh, it's, it's so far it's good to go. Every build is a good build when it comes to Windows 11. Unless... unless it brings a ton of bugs, and they're like, oh, here's a, here's a hot fix. <laughs> well, that's what the beta channel is for. True, very true. You got to so. pick the channels. <laughs> well, I think we got through all of our main topics, which means it's time for the fast recap, which you did a good job with last week, by the way, when I wasn't here. You did it I even know. quicker than when I'm not, than when I'm here. That, we know who the problem is. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, let's see if we can do it again. It's, it's yeah, like a personal so. challenge. So we have, I'll give us nine minutes on the clock this okay. week for a fast recap. And we are starting with the Windows 365 Cloud PC hitting general availability. I know you uh, uh, talked to our, Kip, our editor in chief, Kip, who tried it out with our Microsoft 365 business account. Yeah, uh, Kip is always, uh, normally has issues with this kind of stuff, but uh, it seems to be. Uh, working itself out as of right now. So I believe it was, what day was it? Let me sure I get the right date uh, this week. August 2nd. There you go, August 2nd. Uh, now that, uh, with that being rolled out in uh, general availability, we get some details about there being two flavors of the Windows 365. Uh, so there's Windows 365 and then Windows 365 for business, uh, which is meant for small to medium businesses of roughly about 300 users or so. Uh, and then the Windows 365 Enterprise, which is for obviously enterprise, you know, probably about 500 to 1,000 or hundreds of thousands or whatnot. Um, some of the details include that 365 for business starts at about 20 bucks per user a month uh, with cloud PC uh, with a single core CPU, two gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of, or, 64, or 64 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, and then the price can go as high as 162 bucks a month uh, for an eight core setup with 32 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. So uh, those are some of the pricing details. Not much else has really changed since uh, testing it out, though. Like, you do get your uh, your VMs. Uh, it seems to be dependent on your connection as well a little bit, even though that you're running most of this from Microsoft's server. Uh, you know, depending on how rural you are, and Kip's pretty rural, uh, you could have some issues with uh, connectivity, so to speak. But uh, he seemed to be, even as far out as he is where he's at, uh, he seemed to be on a pretty stable version of it. And uh, moving on to our second story now, uh, SwiftKey beta on well, Android only got a cloud clipboard syncing. And what this means is that if you have something on your clipboard on Android, you'll also be able to carry it over to your clipboard on Windows 10, which is amazing because uh, say it's a link or if it's uh, something you copy that you really want to have on your computer, now you have a way to do it. And you just need to opt your um, app, uh, go to the Google store and find the SwiftKey beta app, install it, sign in, and then you'll be able to sync your clipboards between your two different devices. 
Yeah, I mean, this is what I've always been kind of, or not always, but this is what I've been saying late as of recent for Microsoft to compete against Chromebooks and things of that nature is, you know, they are number two in the cloud world. So cloud syncing across all kinds of things like your OneNote app, your uh, to-do list, the keyboards, your browser from your mobile to uh, desktop. If Since they don't actually have a product, a, a robust product like the iPhone, things like this, if they can get their software to do all of the heavy lifting, people will be more apt to, you know, say, oh, I have one, you know, I use it on my desktop, I'll use it on my phone. And next thing you know, you have yourself a Surface Duo at some point because it doesn't matter. And our third topic here in Fast Recap has to relate to COVID-19 because Microsoft is getting ready to fully reopen its offices around the world, but now you have the Delta variant messing up all of those plans and ruining everyone's fun. But uh, Microsoft just announced that it will start requiring proof of COVID-19 vaccination for everyone visiting its offices starting next month. That includes Microsoft employees, vendors, or other guests. And employees who couldn't get the vaccine for medical reasons or religious beliefs will get a special accommodation. I did see Microsoft tweet about how they have their own vaccination hub on the campus. So it's really Microsoft pushing people to get that jab and to help stop the spread of this annoying coronavirus that just won't go away. Yeah, um, I'm sure their their accommodations will probably be similar to what uh, the administration has for their own employees, where they get you know yeah. they're allowed to get tested weekly. Uh, I don't know if they'll have to come out of pocket for that or if Microsoft will foot the bill, but uh, that's up to them. Uh, yeah, I mean Microsoft is also joining. Uh, a bunch of other companies who have either reversed course entirely and said, you know, we're just going to remain shut down uh, indefinitely, or we're going to um, reopen with all of these stipulations at a later point because, again, everyone had kind of assumed that we'd be turning the corner on this and not with the Delta variant kind of rearing its head and bringing us back to where we're at. So uh, keep an eye on that. Google's uh, in the mix for stuff like that. Apple's kind of under some hot water by their employees for that. Uh, Twitter, some other places have decided just to stay. Uh, uh, was at home indefinitely. Like they're they're just shutting down a lot of their offices already. So uh, it's a it's an evolving and growing thing for for every business now. And last up is uh, Edge ninety three news, which I know you're always using the different channels of the Edge Insider program. So what's new in Edge ninety three now that yeah. it hit beta? I use all three just uh, just to kind of <laughs> see where progress is at. Uh, we have initial preferences in Microsoft Edge. We have IE mode. Uh, we'll now support non-merger behavior so that you can have separate sessions uh, when you go into IE mode versus, uh, uh, you know, if you're trying to do uh, business in one version of the browser and, you know, testing in another one, you know, all of your searches and things like cookies and stuff like that will be shared. You get tab groups, uh, which is, you know, big. Everyone loves that kind of stuff. We get the, the hidden title bar uh, while using vertical tabs. Again, uh, that was something that we've always... A lot of people wanted uh, just because it looked like it took up ne- unnecessary one sixteenth of the screen. Um, there was video picture in picture mode, which is uh, which will hover over the two bar. Um, I think this is become native. I know that there are extensions that do that, but I think this is a native version of picture picture for you. Uh, and then we have remo- removal of the three D E S in T L S. Uh, that was a lot of letters. I don't even know what that actually means. It's just starting <laughs> with Edge ninety three support for the T L S underscore R S A underscore with underscore 3ds underscore ede all of these other <laughs> things cypher suite will be removed if you know what those things are <laughs> i applaud you uh, this change will happen within the chromium project on which microsoft edge is based on for more information navigate to the chrome platform so uh this seems to be some kind of uh string of code that uh people who are avert who are versed in github should keep, be aware about and that's it. i think we finished everything we needed to get to in fast recap unless you have to add something uh no i i think we're good <laughs> so then we hit do it under nine minutes we hit our nine minute goal which means it's time for our other favorite segment which is week ahead week ahead and in week ahead this week um i was sent a webcam from uh sj cam it's called the sj cam c200 and this is a small form factor action camera it's mainly an action camera, but it also doubles as a webcam, and you could plug it into your PC just like how I have my Dell webcam up there, and it's a 4K resolution, so it's crisp and it's clean, and I took it with me in my trip to Washington, D.C. last week, and 
Oh, you, it's it's an action camera, so it has six axis stabilization. So you could strap it on your neck or put it on your bike or even like strap it on your backpack or your chest or something and walk around with it. And it stabilizes the video. So it's super smooth and super crisp and it has a lot of different cool features. But that's just a mini review. Uh, the full review is coming up next week. And uh, that's my part of Week Ahead. Now I'll let you get into the other part. Yeah, we got, uh, we're assuming more teasers from Hanos because again, we have about a solid two months uh, and they're always doing new things. And like I said, I'm predicting that uh, each of these new inbox apps will get teased. Hopefully we'll see uh, hints of the new mail clients, uh, the new photos clients, stuff like that. Uh, then we have, uh, and I, I don't have very much hardware. Like I said, I owe you guys a bunch of laptop reviews, but I do have a power bank that was given uh, for Ooh, me to test nice. out. It's a cool, like, you know, retro kind of style setup or whatever. Um, but gets great battery life, has a bunch of different ports. Uh, I've been using it for the past week and a half to kind of power my phone, even power my laptop. Uh, Ooh, can... so it has PD on it? Yeah. So That's I nice. can get up to about 60% on a full charge from this thing, and it's pretty small. So uh, this is for the Surface Laptop 4. Anyway, I'll have a full review of that later with uh, alongside uh, the software reviews I you guys. And then last but not least is our resident uh, Xbox guy, slash max fan which is you know, <laughs> it's a cool intersection i guess if you're if you're of those two worlds and lawrence teasing his i'll let you say uh, it. his apple m1 mac mini review. Oh. Uh, well it's not really a review he specifically told me to say that it's not going to be a review it's more of a comparison of what apple has done with the the m1 chip and with um with arm chips and what microsoft has failed to do and what Microsoft's partners has failed to do and comparing the whole situation and the whole market and all of the apps and the performance and all that, all that good stuff. Yeah, so we'll be anxiously awaiting those of you who are itching, your fingertips are itching to write something. Uh, his post should be up soon. <laughs> and that's it. I think we hit everything we wanted to talk about today. And uh, as always, we thank you for watching us. Yeah, you can find me at Mindhead1 on Twitter. Uh, that's where I kind of hang out. Uh, where can people find you? A back journey. Cool. And then, again, you can also find uh, all of our news, giveaways, uh, features, and things like that on, on Microsoft, which is also on Twitter. Uh, and, again, if you have any questions, you want to be on the podcast at some point, you got a great point of view on something, let us know. We'd love to have you guys on. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. And see you again soon. Same place, same time. Stay vaccinated, stay safe. Bye-bye.